truly a servant of the people, Imam Waradin Muhammad. Takbir! 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 Assalamu alaikum. And peace be unto you. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. I witness that there is but one worthy of worship, that is the one God, Allah, in the Arabic, in the Quranic uh, term. And I witness, wa ashadu an Muhammad an abduhu wa rasuluhu. And I witness that Muhammad, to whom the Quran was revealed about 14 centuries ago, and a little better, is his servant and his messenger. <coughs> We thank Allah for guiding us to faith in this religion. We thank Allah for the opportunity to serve His purpose, His will, and His purpose for the betterment of ourselves and we hope for the betterment of all people. <clears throat> we are going to address for this occasion the topic or the theme of Tawheed Tawheed, the oneness of God. <clears throat> and uh, to begin, the Muslim understands that uh, <clears throat> there is no partner with God. There is no division of uh, the uh, rule of God. The rule of God. There is no division in the rule of God. There is no uh, share Shares, sharers in the rule of God. No one shares authority, divine authority with God. No one shares <clears throat> the run of authority for running the universe, the creation, with God. God is God alone, and everyone, everything, and everyone acting on, on, uh, as, uh, with God are acting in God's purpose is serving only as a servant and not as a God. Only one God. This idea of, of oneness perhaps uh, uh, caused some problems for some people uh, who have been introduced to other ideas of the oneness of God. By us stating this purity of the concept, it doesn't mean that we don't believe or we reject Christians. Uh, for not uh, having the same concept that we have. Uh, no, we do believe that Christians too believe in the one God. And that the Jewish Jews believe in the one God. The Jews, the Christians, and ourselves believe in, the, and the Muslims, we all believe in the one God. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, for us to, for us to accept anything other than Tawheed, our concept of God, is disbelief on our part is disbelief on our part. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this oneness of God brings us to see the creation then as the creation of one God bearing the, bearing the will, purpose of one God. The creation is the creation of one God and that creation bears the will and purpose of that one God. Uh, that is, that, w that creation is responding to the authority of that one God, the whole creation. It belongs to one, it responds to the authority of one. Uh, in, uh, in the Quran, it says, it's not there for the Allah, for, the, for, the, for Allah, for God, the, the creation and the command, the creation and the command, so we're talking about Tawheed, the oneness. This is the way, best way I understand to bring you this idea today of this oneness. It is not there for God, both the creation and the command. So we don't believe that the creator of this universe retires and somebody else, President Bush can run it. No, we believe that uh, the, the creator never retires. This creation is his. And also the command is always here. So we believe in the, in the oneness of God and we believe in the unity of his creation. 
and we believe in the, in, the, in the destiny of his creation. His creation has a destiny. He has created the creation for his purpose, for his purpose. And we believe that establishment, no matter whether it's a Muslim establishment or non-Muslim establishment, whether the establishment of this nation or establishment of China and some other nation, we believe that all these establishments are under the rule of God. And no matter how far we go away from the rule of God, eventually God's rule will, uh, will, will be established. So we believe in the, in the coming establishment, the coming establishment of God's purpose for his creation. This brings us also to the, to, 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 to the idea of ownership. The creator of this universe is the owner of this universe. We are not to think of ourselves as the owners of anything, except for practical purpose in dealing with each other. But when we really look at it in reality, we are not the owners of anything. We come in this world and we have no decision, decision over that at all. We had no decision over how we were gonna come here. We have no decision over how we're gonna go. Some of us may think we do, but we don't. We're talking about the oneness of God, one creation, one will. One God, one creator, one creation, and one will. And his will, we believe, is the overriding will. And it will decide the end of all things. It decided the beginning of all things, and Allah's will will decide the end of all things. If we believe that then, we as believers should be preparing for the end that God wants. If we know tomorrow there's going to be a such and such situation for us established, wouldn't we be preparing for it? If we knew there was going to be as cold as it was, the day it turned cold here in Houston, wouldn't we have prepared for it? So if uh, it common sense, there is common sense then that if we, and as we know, if we've been informed and we know what kind of establishment God wants, we should be all the time preparing ourselves for that establishment, to meet the requirements of that establishment. This is all Tawheed. I'm speaking in the theme of Tawheed, the oneness of God and togetherness. Togetherness. Nothing will bring us together in Houston. Nothing will bring us together in the United States. Nothing will bring the global community together better than obeying God. That's the factor, to obey God. For after all, we reject each other's authority. It's natural to reject, to reject each other's authority unless it's qualified by a bigger authority. Why should you accept me as an authority in your life? There's no reason for you to accept me as an authority in your life unless I can qualify my authority upon a bigger authority. And I have supporters who support me all over these United States. I have dear friends out here in this audience today who support me, they love me, they support me. They'll come, they'll come and see, see what I'm going to say, whether I'm going to say nothing about Asalaamu Alaikum. They'll, they'll come, they'll spend their, they'll pay, they'll pay, just to come here, get a plane ticket or something, just to come here. If they hear no more from me, then peace be unto you. They're, they're happy. Uh, how come? Why is that? It's not because of W.D. Muhammad, the little child that was born. It's because of the person that they have uh, 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 come to see and recognize in this, in this person. They have come to see a person that have developed, grown and developed in this, in, in, in W.D. Muhammad's name, this person. And um, they are convinced that uh, he's not coming on his own ticket, that he has another ticket that he's coming on, you know? And, if, and if, uh, if they ever come to believe that I'm coming on my own ticket, I won't have them anymore. They believe I'm coming on a ticket more valuable, bigger than myself, you know? So, so I, I'm, I'm established with them because I'm uh, established in a bigger qualification than myself. And if we accept the President of the United States, we accept him as the President of the United States because he is supported by a qualification bigger than him in, 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 in his person, in his person. He's supported by the, United, the people of the United States, majority of the people of the United States, for certain qualifications for that office, for that office. If he does not have the qualifications for that office, the people are not going to, going to support him. So his office is bigger than he is. That's, what, that's, that's the point. 
The office is bigger than he is. And when we accept to come out here and be spokesmen for the cause of peace and justice and unity and whatever, uh, if, if, uh, if, if we don't see that cause bigger than ourselves, then we're in trouble. If we don't see the office of the speaker or the imam bigger than the person, we are in trouble. We're in serious trouble. And uh, believe me, that's the key for not being jealous of each other. You know, you know, if we want to get rid of jealousy, jealousy is the ignorance. Jealousy is a darkness. Jealousy is a blinder. If we want to get rid of envy and jealousy, we have to really see uh, our own, our own uh, reality. Our own reality. Once we see our own reality, then we have peace with others, the reality for other people. And the reality that we have to see is that if we don't have something bigger than ourselves individually, we are not going to ever rise above the floor. And I mean the, 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 the crawling, the crawling situation there on the floor, right? We, are, we won't get any establishment. We might put one over for a while, but it won't last long. People will see us. In time, people will see us. And many times we think we have what we don't have. You know, to have something in the outer appearance and don't have it, don't have it in, in reality, it's still, it's still false. The outer appearance can be unreal. Uh, for after all, what, what, do we, what, do we, what do we want possessions for? What do we want admirers for? We want it so we can feel good inside. Huh? We want it so we can feel good inside. So if we have all this and still feel burdened inside, tormented inside, it's not real for us. And believe me, many people have great wealth but are tormented inside. Many people have a lot of admirers but are tormented inside. You see? So these are some realities that I just threw in there on the sideline. Now, getting back to the <laughs> getting back to the theme, the oneness of God. One God, one creator. One creator, one creation. One life. There's no several lives, there's no different life. One life. We have different, different uh, forms of life in that one life, but the life itself is one. If it wasn't, we couldn't study life scientifically. We can study life scientifically because the life is one. Then we have the different branches of science in the, in the, in the total uh, 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 concept of life. We have the different branches of biology, biology, physiology, different branches. But they all come under one law. Is that right? You have to know essentially the law of life. And all the, the basic units of that life, they're one. Life is composed of molecules and atoms, huh? And the material world is composed of molecules and atoms. So the law of material life, of material reality, is govern the whole material. So this is one. Science proves to us that this universe, this creation is one. The universal law extending throughout this creation, one universal law, one universal law, one creation. No, no several creations. Human life then. Human life is one. Eh? In our constitution, the constitution of the United States, any great constitution for a people or nation, it has to recognize the scientific identity of its citizens. The scientific identity of the citizens. It, our constitution does not recognize any racial identity that's based upon emotionalism or prejudices. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Huh? All men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. So uh, uh, here, the Constitution establishes the scientific identity of man. That he is created by a creator. Huh? He is created by, he's created by a creator. And the creator has given him not only his creation, but his nature. And has not only given his creation in his nature, but has also given him his possibilities. His possibilities have been determined by his creator. He is of a certain creation, he is of a certain uh, 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 nature, and uh, he is of certain, he is of a certain value, certain value. God, the creator who created him, also established the value for him. That's what this constitution is saying. By reasoning, we have to come to this, con this conclusion. 
that the Constitution is saying that of man. No matter what this party may interpret, or that party may interpret, or this uh, uh, fanatic may interpret, or that fanatic may, may interpret, by and large, in time, we support that idea of man in the Constitution. And because of that, that idea has triumphed over the unnatural concepts of man. Huh? White man being something special, black man being something inferior. That idea has conquered the, the falsehood and have established that we are all the same. Now we live, 100 years ago we couldn't talk like this. 50 years ago we couldn't talk like this. But today we can talk like this. Why? Because our nation, the wise men of our nation, respected what? The unity of creation. The oneness of man. Huh? The unity of creation. The oneness of man. The scientific reality. They respected it, they respected it, and established the identity of the citizen upon that observation. Huh? Now, so we're talking about Tawhi. That's what we're talking about, Tawhi. So the, 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 uh, <clears throat> the definition for man is a scientific definition. All, all knowledge that holds up and lasts endures the test of time and change is scientific. Scientific. Yes. So, so to believe in the creator is to have, have the greatest, the, the, I, I would say, is to be facilitated in the best way to benefit from creation. To believe in other than the creator is to have difficulty. Is to have a hindrance. Is to have an obstacle in your way. Is to have a blinder before you. Any other concept other than the creator presents a confusion for the person who wants to make good out of this life. If we want to make good out of this life, the best way to address your God is to address your God as the Creator, not as anything else, as the Creator. Now, we, we say, well, uh, Brother Imam, Allah is, is a Rahman, Allah is a Rahim. I know. وَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ hmm? In the name of God, or with God's name, the merciful, the merciful, the mercy giving, or the beneficent, the merciful. Both are Rahman, mercy. A Rahman, mercy. A Rahim, mercy. A Rahman, mercy has given us all these things that we that we acknowledge, know about, need, and everything. Mercy, mercy, mercy again in helping us when, when we when we run into trouble. Hmm? Mercy and given, mercy and redeeming. Mercy and given, and then mercy is helping us when we run into trouble. He's mercy to resurrect us after already giving us everything. Then he resurrects us after we're dead. That's mercy. To give us, to give, to, to give us a chance after we have uh, blown this one. That's, a, that's again another mercy, huh? So he's twice merciful. He's a Rahman a Rahim. Both mean mercy. He's twice merciful. Yes. So, then we say, Alhamdulillah. Thank God. Praise be to God. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to God, or thanks to God, Lord of all the world. Rabbil Alameen. Lord of all the world. Who is the Lord? The Lord is the Creator. Is it not for Him both the creation and the rule? Is it not for Him both the creation and the command? Some people believe that the God, the Creator, rested and then someone else comes up and He's the command. He's in the command. Right? Some people believe that idea. Well, we think they're confused. They're not seeing that that's the same God. There's <laughs> no other one. No, no one came. But no, the, the God didn't, he wasn't eclipsed by anything. I didn't sit down. I didn't retire. No, the same God. You have to give the same God that credit for that. The Creator is in command. The Creator is also the Lord. The Creator is also the Lord. Muslim, don't think because we say Allah, Allah, the name Allah, Allah, and we say Allah, ar rahman Rahim, Allah is a Rabb, that we're taking anything from Allah the Creator. The Quran makes it very clear to us, and our Prophet has made it very clear to us, that God is Creator. And not only the Creator 
in some way as the, some people believe God created this, but man does this. No, you made a car, Allah created it. Now this is philosophical, but, but, but believe me, this is reality. You made a car, say, oh, that's a man's creation. No, that's not man's creation. That's Allah's creation. Now, if I have, if I have some people in my business, they're working for me. I'm producing a product. The product is my conception. The business is my conception. Then I bring them into my business. And they pr pr produce a product. They come up with an idea to produce a product in my business. And what they used was my concept. What they used, my facility. What they used was my insight. They were, they were just extending bringing something into existence uh, uh, formed out of what, what I had already provided. And along the same law, they didn't, know, they didn't break with my law of operation. They, 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 my law also was, 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 was uh, carried out for their product. My law. In other words, my pattern. They didn't come up with no new way of pattern. No, they used my pattern to come up with another pattern. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Okay, now when they produce that product in my business, can I come take them to the court and say, no, this is not yours? Can I come to the court and say, no, this is not yours? It's my facility, my concept, my business, my business, and my insight, my knowledge? So how is that yours? That's mine. All right. Same way it is for this creation. We make a car, but we cannot make a car except that we obey Allah's laws. You cannot make a car without obeying Allah's laws. That's why anybody can't make a car. You have to know the Allah's creation, Allah's materials, Allah's metals, Allah's energy and everything. You have to learn about Allah's energy, how Allah has made his energy to operate. And you have to learn about the possibilities for Allah's materials and for Allah's energy. And you have to uh, copy something Allah has already made. And if you study the car, you will see that the car is a duplication of a living organ. It's a duplication of a living organ. The way it, ha it needs water for cooling. Uh, and everything, the way it needs air to breathe, to burn the fire and everything. We don't have time for all that, but if you study it, you see it's a duplication. You study the submarine, it's a duplication of a living creature Allah made. You study the airplane, it's a duplication of a living creature Allah made. You study the rocket, it's a duplication of an observation that man have already made in creation. You study the rocket, it's a duplication of an observation man has made already in creation. So we can go on and on and on. Healing, healing. Life has been made to heal itself. The best doctor is the doctor that knows how to use life's healing power. Eh? Yes. Okay, so, you know, I'm talking to people that, that have been shut out of the light. Yes. Most of us, we just shut out of the light. So because we're shut out of the light, we, we just worship the white man. I hate to bring this talk in, but we just want him like, oh, Lord, I know that Jesus is my Savior because he's white. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> if they ever dig up some facts and come out here and prove he's a nappy-headed African, oh, shoot. It's over for the black man. The Christian had to be over for the black man. <laughs> have, have, no, have, have nobody in there but a few of the nation of Islam past people. <laughs> I've said so far, or what we believe in, this is what we believe in. I think I'm speaking for all of us. If we can accept that, then I think we can accept that Muslims should have a big role on this planet Earth. If that's 
our concept of God in reality, we should have a big role on this planet Earth. We shouldn't be any small thinking people. We shouldn't be any selfish people. We shouldn't be looking at our nationalistic concern, putting that nationalistic concern over the cause of God. We shouldn't be looking at our situations in the United States as ethnic groups or nationalized citizens and seeing that interest over the cause of God. If we, when we come into this big reality of God and man's reality, what's the prophet has said, whoever has known himself has known God. Peace be upon the prophet. Is that right? Well, some of you know the mystics don't believe in all mystics now. The mystics drink strong wine. Yeah, some of them don't, but most of the mystics, they drink strong wine. I think a lot of that, that I didn't let the mystics get me. It was Allah's blessing that the mystics didn't get me. They came at me now. Oh yeah, they came at me. They wanted me bad. <laughs> but their, their drink was too strong for me. And uh, the Army Elijah Muhammad gave me something that made me dizzy. I don't know whether it was a drink or a punch. And uh, after him, you know, I just didn't want to get that out of my mind. So I refused their strong drinks. But they came at me. Uh, you know, uh, we don't want to uh, allow ourselves to uh, go astray, go astray from a lost purpose, from a lost purpose. Uh, Allah is bringing about his purpose. This is the people, the people of all the great religions believe it. God is going to bring about his purpose no matter what we do. He's going to bring about his purpose. And when I look back into time, into history, the, the history of, uh, of uh, progress for justice in this country, in the life of the United States, since we've been involved, and we've been involved almost since the beginning of this, this in fact, since the beginning of the United States. Maybe not the beginning of the people, the presence here of the European people, but since the beginning of the United States, I know we have been here and been involved. So, um, <clears throat> When I look at that, I see progress. And when I look at the, uh, the, 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 the movement of civilization, going back to ancient times as far as we can go back, till now, I see progress. Certain things have gotten worse, but as far as the, 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 the uh, situation for the human being, there has been progress. The human being is better informed now, I believe, than at any other time, except in the time of the prophets, where they were listening to the prophets in the few centuries or the few uh, years that came after that. But um, uh, except for the presence of the prophets themselves, the human being is in the best situation in terms of being informed now than ever. Now, we can't find a, a, a time in the past where a human being were as richly as in, informed as they are now? I'm speaking of the masses of people, the populations of people. The populations of people are in a much better situation in terms of being properly informed. Now, uh, in our religion, I have, I have to say these things because if we don't appreciate the uniqueness and the distinction that we have as Muslims, then we might, might as well just be anybody, right? right? We have to appreciate our uniqueness, our distinction. And we want to cooperate with everybody. But I, uh, I'm, I'm against this tendency in us to become sentimental and emotional or sentimental, overly sentimental, become emotional and get overly sentimental and just want to make everybody the same. We are not the same. We are the same, basically, or essentially, we are the same. But in terms of how we are going to affect life for ourselves and life for others, we are not the same. We're different. We're different. Christian is not like a Muslim. Jew is not like a Muslim. We are essentially different in how we are going to live our lives and how we are going to affect life for others. We are essentially different. 
So let us not become overly sentimental and confuse that. That doesn't mean we don't want brotherhood and cooperation and coexistence and peace with others and we don't want, we do want that. And the reason why we can get that, because of that essential likeness. We are basically the same. We are all human beings. We are human beings. We belong to the universal life of the human being. We are that. And upon that, and upon a certain other principles and certain other, other uh, sensitivities that we have in common with Christians, more so than with Jews. We, there's a lot of room for cooperation. There's no fear to live together in peace. No, if anything, we should be excited about the possibilities to live with Christians in peace. I am. Because I see so much going for us if we will only respect each other, become better acquainted with each other, and respect each other. The, 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 the address that was made tonight, last night at the banquet by Reverend Bill Lawson, I was surprised to see an African-American. Like I said, oh, that sounds racist, that sounds prejudiced. Yeah, I guess it does, I can't help it. I was surprised to see a black preacher with such, I would say, skill, maturity, maturity, skill, and insight. Oh, he's a man of great insight, a man of great maturity, a man of great skill. Well, he did a wonderful job last night. He made us feel happy that we invited him. We felt happy that he would invite us. He didn't take anything from the dignity of Muslims. He embraced the dignity of Muslims. Didn't he? Yes, wonderful. So, so what, look, look at the great possibilities for us working together with people like that. Oh, we, 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 we have to include in the army of the Muslims like Bill Lawson. Huh? Allies like Bill Lawson. And uh, he should see us as an ally included in his battle, in, all his, in his army, huh? Yes. So these, I'm not saying that we don't have uh, 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 cause to be excited over working together with Christians and Jews, even Jews. But uh, with the situation in Palestine and the situation in the past and now, uh, where we're gonna need we're gonna need some spacesuits and everything when we <laughs> <laughs> we gonna need our own environmental support <laughs> when we meet with them. <laughs> God is bringing about His establishment. And when we look back in history and, 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 and say, how has this uh, uh, progress been coming for civilization? And civil, for want of a better term, I'm using civilization. We can't use moral life because, you know, moral life is one thing in the eyes of one person, another thing in the eyes of another. Do you know when, uh, when, uh, when uh, uh, many Christians wrote us off as subhuman in this country, they thought they were morally right? until they were proven, convinced that they were morally wrong, and some of them are not convinced yet. Uh, uh, when they used to treat laborers like they did, you know? If you study the history of labor, they used to treat labor like animals. That's like animals. They didn't value them as they valued other human beings. So it was not just blacks, it was the people that didn't have what they called the divine spark in them. If they didn't have the divine, what they called the divine spark or the light, the divine light, then they thought it was justified to treat them as beasts. That you are not a really human being in reality unless you have their vision, their mind, their vision. And a lot of whites are like that now. When they are treating you bad and, and stubborn in their prejudices, don't think that it's because your skin is black. Look at him kiss a black dog and let his black dog eat off his hamburger with him. They eat it, eat it, and they let the black dog have it. So they're not black that he has all that problem with. Look at him eat the black caviar so with such dignity. And it's black, eat the black caviar with such dignity on the first class, in the first class seat of that thing, you know? He eats just caviar, black caviar. He's so proud that he's eating caviar, black. And as one uh, immigrant told me once, he said, uh, he said, it was strange to me that they didn't want to touch you black 
and had you blacks in the kitchen touching all their food that they were eating. <laughs> so, you know, don't think that uh, he had to come up, we had to, we had to peep this man's, peep this man's game. You have to peep his thing. Look into his thing. It's not our skin that they're talking about. It's our mentality that they're talking about. It's our emotionality that they're talking about. They're saying that we are not enlightened. And we don't have a nature to be enlightened. That's what they're claiming. That we don't even have a nature to be enlightened. Our nature does not seek enlightenment. Our nature seeks fun, joy. <laughs> you know? So that's what they're saying about us. So that's the idea of us. And we have to grow up above this thing to think that they're looking at our skin color and our nappy hair. <clears throat> they go and buy a, a, a nappy rug. They don't say, I don't want that nappy rug. If I'm really against nap, I wouldn't buy a nappy rug. I wouldn't buy a nappy coat. I wouldn't put on a nappy cat cap. You know, if I'm really against nap, then let's be consistent. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not against that. Some of them are, uh, uh, are so curious, you know, they, if you ain't careful, if you look at you just be easy with them and relax, they'll come up and... <laughs> I've had them do it to me. Touch my head. That's how I feel. This, 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 this actually happened to me. This, this, this white, young leg, white lady, she, I, I relaxed her so much, she put her hand on my head like this. I didn't have it quite brought, brushed and combed so nicely. And she did this. So, you know what I did? This was after I had grown up a little bit. I took my hand and rubbed her. <laughs> I said, thank you. I said, I had never felt yours before either. <laughs> 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 so I guess it's what you like, you know. But I, did, I, I, I had no desire to rub her head. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> so really, it's not these things. It's not these things. It's not, the, it's not these things. It's something else that's blinding us, and you know. Yes. Yeah. So some of us think we, we, we won't be happy, you know. We, we don't want to leave here until we get that white woman, you know. We ain't, well, the only thing I ain't is a little white woman. <laughs> You want to feel something close to her hair? Get a live chicken and rub the feathers. <laughs> not, not, not to criticize, but that's the way it's going to feel. It's going to feel just like get a pigeon or any bird with a nice smooth feather and then rub it. That's the way it's going to feel. <laughs> and you want to know how the chicken, be, that how the, how the beach going to feel? Then just take the live bird and just feel the skin. I'll get down to the skin and feel that skin. That's the way it's going to feel. It's gonna feel just like that. Smooth and nice and white. Warm, baby. That's the way it's gonna feel. I think a lot of my curiosity has made me as a, uh, get involved that way. And I hope it won't. The only way I marry a white woman is have to, I have to see it bringing in great benefits for Islam. <laughs> That's the only way I'd admit be a white woman. I, I, I have to be convinced that it's going to mean great benefits for Islam. And right now, it'll be bad consequences for me and bad consequences for my dollar. So, so I, have no, I have no interest whatsoever in marrying a white woman. I want white men to know that. They'll like me better. <laughs> yeah, why, why ask for unnecessary problems? We got enough. Why, why complicate this thing more? You know? See, a lot of our leaders, they don't want to tell us that. We don't help our situation when we just marry into other races. The white man treats us, most of them treat us the way they do because they don't believe that we qualify for membership in the civilized society. To qualify for membership in civilized society, you have to first have a, a decent, dignified life of your own. You have to have what they call true, true social life and, aspir and, and, and aspirations. True social life and aspirations. You have to have loyalty first to your wife, to your husband, to your children, to your home life, to your own community. 
if you don't have that, then they can't respect you because it's just like a man operating a business and he wants the rest of the business operators uh, on, the, on, on the street to accept him on that street. But he doesn't, he doesn't have the business loyalty that they have. His business loyalty are, 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 are directly in, against uh, in opposition to their business laws. So they don't want him on that street. So uh, not only the white man, any race. If a, another race see you not having the devotion and loyalty to your own uh, members of your own racial group, your wife, your family, children, to want to see you, to be happy with an African-American woman, if they don't see that in you, then that makes you an alien. You, you, you're, not, you're not a member, you're an alien. And let me tell you something. Nature itself is against that. It's against that. Nature, nature uh, uh, has been designed to, to make good situations for life. Nature always wants to help life to become, in a, to get in a better situation. That's nature. You know, nature we can kill us to help make a better situation. <laughs> For those that live, will live. Yes, nature will kill us. Allah made it like this. Nature will kill us to get rid of that that's keeping the good situation for coming for life. You see? So that's, the, that's evolution, evolution and what they call uh, uh, um, uh, selection. Selection. Uh, mm. I can't, the expression. Yes, yes. Uh, what is the term? Hmm? Adaptive selection. Yeah, natural selection and adaptive selection. So the, that's the order of nature, is to always improve. Science believes that, these, that this life started with this little simple organism, right? Little simple forms of life. And then grew into bigger forms and better forms uh, uh, to uh, make better situations for that life in the environment. Now, we don't follow all the ideas about evolution. We know we don't. But uh, if we look at the, the Quran, we see that Allah tells us too that we, we are created from lower stages and weaker stages and brought to higher and stronger and greater stages. This is, this is life. This is life. And if you don't, <coughs> and if you don't uh, uh, accept what has been designed in this life for you, you go against it, you'll be eliminated. You'll be eliminated. So we don't want to be eliminated. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, once, once you come back into an appreciation for yourself and your own people, sometimes we have to force ourselves. Many of us come into this because of force, because of being disciplined, because of being forced. And I, I wouldn't be the person I am now. My mother hadn't disciplined me and put the rod to me when she had to. Yeah, she disciplined me and insisted that I be the child she wanted me to be. And uh, I owe, owe a lot of mine. Uh, obedience that I have now, I owe it to her. I owe it to her. And if I hadn't had a mother like her, I probably wouldn't have this obedience. That is really saving my life. <laughs> yes, the obedience she ingrained in me is saving my life. I do believe it's saving my life. Not that I'm uh, uh, depending solely on her. No, she or she put the fear of God in me, and the fear of God in me has grown and matured since then. So I'm actually more obedient now than I ever been. <laughs> I do believe I am. I'm more obedient now than I ever been. But it was because of that good uh, discipline that I received, that my mother insisted upon, that I, I do believe that that's, that's, that, that, that's, that that's the reason for me uh, being in a good situation now. Uh, because you know, the children that are neglected, they, their chances of being uh, established in the future is really hurt terribly if they're neglected at home. The, uh, most of the people who success, who succeed in life are those that had uh, good situations at home. Most of those that fail in life are those that had bad situations at home. Isn't that the case? You who work in the prisons, I know you understand, you know. Yes, uh, we're going to try to close this out. And I'm going to close it out by going to Yes. The 
global scene for us now. <clears throat> now, you know, President Bush has made statements about the coming in, the coming of the new world order and all that. Now, you know, I don't know what he's looking at or how he's interpreting the global trends and the global realities for us today. But I think I know how we should be looking at it as Muslims. <clears throat> Allah tells us in the Quran that his will overrides everything. And no matter what we do, Allah's will is going to determine the outcome. In the end, we're going to have to accept Allah's will. Uh, when I look at the history of nations, and especially in terms of the global trends, the global influences, I see the, 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 the Quran as the herald, the announcer of just what's going to, what's going to take place. Now, many of us don't think of the Quran in terms of prophecy. I'm not speaking now so much as prophecy. I'm not saying prophecy. But I'm saying that what the Quran addressed, addressed in terms of the, 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 the law of God, the will of God, the overriding purpose of God, affecting life, man's life, and uh, 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 determining the final outcome. What the Quran says about all this, uh, uh, to me, shines more light on the global reality for man than anything I have ever come in contact with. That's my opinion as a student of the Quran. Of the Quran. Uh, look, 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 what, look what Allah says so many things in the, uh, that uh, uh, He says that, you know, the, the, the Bible that has certain things, but then the Quran has certain things. There's that the earth is going to behave <coughs> as though it is getting revelations from his creator, from his Lord. The earth is going to throw off its burden. The earth is going to throw off her burden and will be behaving as though it's getting revelations from our Lord. This is natural. It's talking about natural change, natural things, natural consequences. The Quran is saying that there are natural consequences is going to occur that's going to bring man to accept the establishment God wants for him. Now, we can see that if we take time. This is, we can't exhaust this in this little time that we have here today. Uh, so we're just uh, touching upon things. We're, we're just asking you to look at certain things. Uh, and again, we, uh, there's a verse in the Quran that says, Rabbana Oh Lord, surely you are gathering, marshalling the whole people, all the people, for a day in which there will be no confusion. Be no doubts and confusion. And mis no, it'll be clear. <laughs> huh? That's what it means. It's a, a day that will, be, that, that will be clear for man. A day that will be clear for man. Now, some of us may think, oh, this is the judgment. The Imam is talking about the judge, things that happen in the judge. As a student of Quran and following others and respecting those learned people in the history of Islam, in the history of the Muslims, that I have studied and come in contact with, I tell you that I'm convinced that what Allah says of the coming judgment applies both to this life and life after. Both to this life and life after. If Allah says that the earth is going to behave as though, uh, 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 going to throw off its burden and they're going to behave as though his, her Lord is revealing to her, that's going to happen in this life. And if it's in the hereafter, it's going to happen there too. But definitely in this life. When Allah says that he is marshalling, He's marshalling the whole, he didn't say the Muslims, and now all people are being marshaled to a day in which there will be no doubt, no confusion, there will be clarity. 
When we study history, the history of man, the history of society, the movement for justice and fairness on this planet, for man, we see that a law, not only man, we can't give this credit to democracy. Democracy wants to take credit, credit, all the credit for the advancement of man. No, we can't give all that credit to democracy. If it wasn't for the natural movement of God's will on this earth, these democracies wouldn't exist. It was not that Christian, enlightened Christians that brought them to these ideas. It was the observation of the movement of nature, the movement of nature, the, the, the demand of natural forces in man, in his soul, in his nature, in, in the nature of society, uh, 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 predicting to, for them, uh, forecasting for them what they should do, what they should establish, what kind of order should they establish to best survive on this planet and best benefit on this planet. It has been natural factors that have moved man more so than any of his ideological imaginations or dreams or whatever. This is what we have to understand. Now, if we can appreciate that and accept that, I say Muslims, other realities supported by that, puts us in a situation that makes us, should, should make us walk as comfortable as any other people on this earth. I don't care what's happening in Palestine, sure it's depressing what's happening in Palestine. It's depressing the way the United States have, 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 have dealt unevenly with the people of Palestine and, the, and, the, and, Israel, and Israel. That is depressing, it's a burden, it's a strain on us, it's painful when we think about that. Think about that. When we look at the situation in the Gulf now, to know how those nations have been manipulated in the past and are being manipulated now. For the advantage, for the advantage of uh, the people who say they love freedom and democracy, but practice one thing in one situation and practice something greatly different in another situation, such as South Africa. Huh? South Africa. One, one thing tolerated over there, as, as, one, as one brother said recently, he said, if we are over in, uh, in, in, in Saudi Arabia for democracy, if it's for democracy's sake that we are over there, then how come we are not in South Africa? There's a worse situation there. And how come we are not in Israel? The worst situation there, you know? So uh, we know we know there are too many contradictions, and the uh, American people are aware of all this. And the American people know why we're over there. We're over there for material, material interest. Vietnam, material interest. Korea, material, in material interest. World War II, material interest. Huh? These wars are fought for material interest. For material interest. And you know, and, and naturally you need to get the morale of the citizens on in support of what you have to do. I'm not saying, you know, I can't, you can't say that they're not entitled to their propaganda. They're entitled to that. But, but, but we, have, we, we have to protect ourselves. We have to protect our interests. And we have to get a good situation for ourselves to accomplish what we want to accomplish as people. And um, uh, we have to be as wise as their people are. Their people hear what they're saying and question what they're saying. They're, they're, they're learned people. They're better informed people. They're, they're people with more on the ball. They're people who want, who want to achieve something in life. They listen to what the president say, and then they digest it for themselves. They, they get all the information they can from the best publications, Wall Street Journal, New York Times or whatever, uh, Newsweek. They get all that, radio, TV. They get all that, and they, they, make, their own, they make their own conclusions. They digest the information for themselves. That's what we have to do, especially leaders. The leaders must do that. We have to di digest the information for, our, for, for ourselves. And you know, when you digest something, you don't digest it for the dog's body. So when I eat and digest my food, I don't digest it for my dog's body. I just digest it for my body. <laughs> so that's what we have to do, you know. When we eat and digest something, be sure you digest that information for yourself, your life, your purpose, your future, not for your dog's life. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Not necessarily your dog, I mean somebody else. Or some, some, some opinion that somebody else is influencing us to accept. They're going to make us accept their opinion. They're going to make us accept their view of what the situation is, and what the reality is, and what we should be doing, doing uh, how we should be progressing, or how we should be uh, 
uh, um, uh, dealing with this particular problem to, 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 to relieve our situation or to make progress, they come up with their idea. Now, if you digest the information under the influence of their uh, assessment of things, then you are digesting that for somebody else's body. <laughs> But if you're doing that for the Muslim assessment, the Muslim must, we must make our own assessment. We must make our own diagnosis, our own assessment. And then we are digesting, we digest the information for ourselves. And it benefits us. You want to digest something for the dog, go, go get some bones in there. And uh, chow, chow, dog chow and that stuff and that'd be all right. The last thing I want to ask is that we see our role as Muslims, as uh, people committed to promote better living conditions for ourselves and other people. We, we are the joint Muslims, and this, this, this is growing. When, uh, when our prophet led the Muslim, the Islamic uh, 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 movement, if we can call it movement, the Islamic force, he was moving in all directions to improve the state of life for Muslims and to set the best example for other people. And not only that, he questioned the behavior of other people, other nations and other people. And when you read the Quran, the Quran is not a book for nationalities and Muslims alone. The Quran is a mercy to all nations, and uh, its benefits are, that means its benefits are to come to all people. Doesn't mean that all people are going to be Muslims, but the, 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 the Islamic benefits are to come to all people. So I make that as my conclusion and hope that we become more aware that God's will is going to be, and he is establishing what he will establish, and we better be aware of it and live in accordance with that so we do not be a hindrance, but a compliment, a help to, to, to that. And in that way, we'll be serving God's will, God's plan, and be serving the best future for man. Thank you, and peace be upon you, and we pray God have mercy on us and forgive us for our sins and guide us always. I mean. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, brother Imam. And brothers and sisters, as uh, we begin to conclude our program for today. Thank you, dear beloved viewers, for tuning in on our program today. And we hope that uh, you will follow our next programs. And, and we thank you very much. And as always, Assalamu alaikum. May the peace of Almighty God be upon you, and we'll see you on our next broadcast. Thank you. Al Islam in Focus. This program has dealt with the misunderstandings that exist in this country about the Muslim religion. We hope this program will bring about a better understanding of the religion of Al Islam. We also hope this program will encourage all people to begin to know each other better so that we can work together to assure the survival of our country. <laughs>